Hello everyone. I bring to you greetings from Ganga Hospital, India. It's a 650 bed tertiary care center for trauma, orthopedics and major reconstructive surgeries. I thank both European Society and the Asia Oceanic Society of Regional Anesthesia for giving me this esteemed opportunity to share our thoughts pertaining to the ultrasound guided regional anesthesia. I have nothing to declare. All the appropriate patients or volunteer consent were obtained for this presentation. So before going into the details of the topic, let's begin with the problem which we are facing in our day-to-day -day clinical practice. This is a very common scenario for those working in the trauma or emergency unit. A patient presenting with the below knee degloving injuries. An appropriate selection and timely execution of the on-arrival regional nerve block will not only make the patient pain-free, but also help us to apply the tourniquet to stop the bleeding, as well as the surgeons to explore the wound and make a decision. Let me share another case scenario where we get bilateral calcaneal fractures for calcaneal pinning or plating. These patients are almost always associated with spine injuries or spine fractures. They can present either before fixation or post fixation of the spine. Here again, the regional anesthesia technique, specifically the popliteal sciatic nerve block without changing the position of the patient offers a great help to the patient as well as the attending anesthesiologist. Undoubtedly, popliteal sciatic nerve block is a widely practiced regional anesthesia or analgesia technique for below knee surgeries, which is either used alone or in combination with saphenous or femoral nerve block to provide complete analgesia. In popliteal fossa block, we need to choose a technique which is less time consuming, easy to perform, simple and relatively safe without any complications, which can provide reliable and effective analgesia and also maintain a balance between the comfort of the patient as well as the performer. If we go through the literature, several approaches of the ultrasound guided popliteal fossa block have been described according to the patient positioning, according to the needling technique or trajectory, and some special modifications were also tried to overcome the technical difficulties encountered in the conventional techniques. So let's have a look at the issues with each technique. In prone or lateral position, we can easily get an optimized image to perform the block and it is very convenient for the performer, but not for the patient. Changing position is time consuming and needs external assistance. And also there is risk of airway compromise if you are using deep sedation. The change in position can be harmful in polytrauma patient, patient with spine injuries, obese, patient on mechanical ventilation or with hemodynamic instability or in pregnant ladies. Hence, sciatic nerve block in supine position is an attractive alternative to provide greater patient comfort while performing the procedure. So now let's focus on the supine approaches described in the literature. I am certain that many of us have either tried or may still be using one of these positions. It requires external human assistance or positional device and the flexion at the knee joint creates an uneven surface. Hence, the transducer placement, image acquisition, stabilization of the transducer and the needle manipulation is challenging, especially for the trainees. If you look at the hand's position, it is also very stressful for the performer to keep the hand steady during the execution of the block. To overcome these problems, gapped supine position and in 2016, Taha described the supine medial approach to access the sciatic nerve. But all these approaches did not solve the problem completely. If you have noticed carefully, 
in all these supine approaches lifting the leg or flexion at the hip or knee joints or external assistance is required limb movement can result in pain in non anesthetized limb and there are chances of misalignment of the non stabilized fractured segment we need a technique to perform the supine popliteal sciatic nerve block in neutral or anatomical limb position hence we proposed caps block as the possible solution to this problem so the caps acronym stands for the crosswise approach to popliteal sciatic nerve block crosswise means across or transverse so it is about a novel technique of popliteal sciatic nerve block or popliteal fossa block in supine position without any external assistance recently we have published these two papers including the technical description and a case series i request all the listeners to go through these two papers according to your convenience to understand more about the caps so now what is caps block why do we need it is it different from the already described or available ultrasound guided popliteal sciatic nerve block approaches why a different name has been given will it change the current trauma management or ra practice for belloni surgeries i firmly believe that you will be able to find the answer after this session so let's delve into the pertinent anatomy and sonu anatomy it is widely acknowledged that the sciatic nerve traverses through the apex into the popliteal fossa and diverges into the tibial and common peroneal components this divergence can happen at any place from its origin that is at the level of sacral plexus to the popliteal crease the cadaveric studies demonstrated that this divergence can happen at up to 18.5 cm above the popliteal crease where the tibial and the common peroneal components leave the common paraneural sheath and continues with their own individual peroneal sheath now if we place the ultrasound transducer in transverse orientation at the distal thigh the ultrasound beams actually falls perpendicular to the sciatic nerve generating the transverse cross sectional image this distal transverse or crosswise approach visualizes the sciatic nerve in short axis medial to the biceps femoris muscle as you can see in this schematic diagram the left one is before and the right one is after the divergence we are catching the sciatic nerve here from the lateral aspect of the thigh in supine position now we need to understand that the image what we are seeing on the ultrasound machine is actually 90 degree rotated image of the real anatomy as you can see here with the linear as well as the curvilinear probes the sciatic nerve lies superficial or lateral to the popliteal vessels here just medial to the biceps femoris muscle as you can see here in pediatric and thin built adult patient i am using the linear transducer whereas in well built muscular adult and obese patients the curvilinear probe is needed to visualize the sciatic nerve lateral to the popliteal vessels so to perform this block along with the ultrasound if you want to use the pns 0.5 milliamps current is enough for the dual guidance as we are using it for the identification not for the localization 100 to 150 mm 22 gauge short bevel echogenic nerve block needle is required to perform this block you can also use the injection pressure monitoring device to improve their safety the local anesthetic you can use according to your practice and the availability at your setup we are using 0.1 to 0.2% ropivacan for analgesia and 0.5% or above for anesthesia along with 4 to 8 mg of dexamethasone and the volume we are using is 15 to 20 ml the patient is placed in supine position with the limb in absolutely neutral or anatomical position as you can see here extended at both hip and knee joints sometimes slight internal rotation might be needed 
which the patient can do themselves. No external assistance is required here. The success of the CAPS block depends on the appropriate positioning of the transducer and the proper scanning technique. First, you have to place the probe in the intermuscular groove between the vastus lateralis and the biceps femoris muscles at the superior border of the patella, which is just proximal to the popliteal crease. Then we have to move the probe proximally until we get a view of hyperechoic honeycomb appearance of the sciatic nerve, hypoechoic muscles and the anechoic vessels and the hyperechoic outline of the femur. At this point, if we rotate the ultrasound probe by 90 degrees, it will reveal the sciatic nerve in long axis view. As you can see here, medial to the hyperechoic femur and lateral to the popliteal vessels with a nice view of the perineural space. Our goal is to identify the sciatic nerve at or just proximal to the level of the divergence. Place the needle tip in the subparaneural space. Deposit the local anesthetic after negative aspiration into the subparaneural compartment. The post block scanning will reveal the circumferential spread of local anesthetic around the tibial and common peroneal components. So, in the out of plane technique, the needle is inserted from lateral to medial direction, as you can observe here. And the local anesthetic is deposited in the subparaneural compartment, which will create a nice donut sign. In in plane technique, the needle is inserted from the anterolateral to the posteromedial direction and it is placed at the sweet spot where the divergence is happening. If you have PNS, you can also use it to get the inversion or plantar flexion response at 0.5 milliamps. Decrease it up to 0.2 to check the intraneural placement of the needle tip and then you can deposit the local anesthetic once you are sure about it. Similar to the other approaches of popliteal sciatic nerve block, CAPS block can serve as standalone anesthesia or analgesia for below knee surgeries. This was well described with the peripheral nerve stimulation guided technique. Following the first description of the ultrasound guided CAPS block, this has become such a routine technique in our hospital. We are currently using CAPS block in almost all cases including trauma or elective surgeries. You needn't alter the patient position for the block, which offers maximum comfort to the patient as well as the performer. Few examples like external fixator application or removal as daycare basis, small bone fracture fixation or implant removal, uh, debridement of the diabetic foot, and the list goes on. It is not just any lateral approaches where either the patient or the probe or the needle is in the lateral position. It can be considered as the true supine lateral approach because the patient is lying supine and the probe is placed on the lateral aspect and the needle is coming from lateral to medial direction. Hence, to differentiate it from the already described several supine lateral or lateral approaches, we coined the term CAPS block for easy identification and implementation without any confusion. In our experience, the site of performance is within 5 to 10 cm proximal to the popliteal crease. Depending on this scanning area, the relation between the popliteal vessels may alter. Sometimes it may not be visible within the ultrasound image. We have observed significant decrease in performance time compared to other popliteal sciatic approaches. We typically prefer the out of plane technique as the needle trajectory in awake patient is shorter compared to the in plane technique, thereby reducing the injection pain. The duration of analgesia is similar to other techniques or approaches. To avoid sparing of one component, I would suggest pre-block scout scanning to identify the divergence point correctly and then proceed for the block. So far, we haven't come across any complications 
but be careful about the nerve or vessel injuries and local anesthetic systemic toxicity and take all the precautions possible. Currently, we are engaged in two randomized control trials. Hopefully, we will be able to share more details soon. Recently, in the last month, Dr. Arun Nagdev and his team published a case series on the application of CAPS block in emergency department. The authors specifically highlighted the minimal repositioning for the performance of the block and the avoidance of opioid therapy or sedation. The performer experience might play a role in the success, especially in case of obese patients with curvilinear probes. It may be safely performed in patients on anticoagulants because of its relatively superficial location. The coverage is similar to any other pop sciatic approaches. Please remember it will not cover the saphenous territory and it won't provide the analgesia for thigh tourniquet. Caps block can be investigated to incorporate into ERAS protocol, daycare surgeries or pre-hospital blocks just like its utilization in acute trauma and emergency department. Currently, we are doing the technical comparison with the other approaches. We are also looking for the feasibility of continuous CAPS block. This location may offer several advantages over the posterior approach, such as lower risk of dislodgement because of the biceps femoris muscle, which can act as a good anchor to keep the catheter in place and it is easy to secure, inspect, or maintain the catheter at this location. No doubt, more prospective investigations are needed. So to conclude, CAPS block is simple, safe, time-saving, and convenient for patients as well as the performer. It is performed in the anatomical or neutral limb position. It is different from the already described ultrasound-guided approaches in the literature. Here, no additional assistance, flexion at the hip or knee joints, or any special positional devices are required. Along with the saphenous snub block, it can provide complete analgesia for below knee surgeries. Thank you for your kind attention.